This is Optimal Finance Daily, Episode 23. It's Never Too Late to Ditch Your Gas Guzzler by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Finance Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in personal finance five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dan Warren. Hey again, everybody, and welcome to Optimal Finance Daily, where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. So you get all that great information from these personal finance experts, and you don't have to do the reading. You can listen to me while you're on your commute, while you're jogging, while you're walking the dog, whatever. It's a great deal for you, and it's a lot of fun for me. And today I have a post from Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. The topic is, it's never too late to ditch your gas guzzler. And just a quick reminder, that this show, as you've probably noticed, does not have any ads, so we're not making any money from it right now. If you are interested in keeping this show alive, please come join the Optimal Finance Daily family. It is free and you can get a bunch of free stuff in the process. All you need to do is to text the word financial to 44222 or visit oldpodcast.com. Joining is a great way to show your support for this podcast project. And with that, let's jump right in and start optimizing your life. It's Never Too Late to Ditch Your Gas Guzzler by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. Mr. Money Mustache has been getting quite a few emails these days asking questions like this one. Dear Mr. Money Mustache, I've only recently discovered your blog and I have decided to change my ways for the better, but I'm still stuck with the relics of my unmustachian past, like my trusty full-sized 4x4 pickup truck with V8 engine, Toyota 4Runner SUV, Land Rover LR2 fake executive luxury truck, etc. But it's paid off, and I'm not sure if I should go through the expense and or hassle of switching vehicles. What should I do, suck it up and live with my past choices, or fix it? It is always nice to hear people asking this question, because it means one of the biggest financial mistakes in the lives of most people, a ridiculous vehicle choice, is up for reconsideration. But far too often, the error never gets fixed, because people don't do the math for themselves. I hear things like, well, it's paid off, so I should keep it forever now, right? That's an old argument left over from the days when people financed cars and then eventually donated them back to the dealer for a tiny credit towards another financed car in a tragic move called the trade-in. Of course, you don't have a car loan and you buy and sell your cars in the private market, miles away from the dealerships, right? If you do have a loan, go ahead and work on that debt emergency but the finance status has nothing to do with whether or not you're driving the right car. So let's not call it a paid off car. Let's just call it a car. The next issue is the definition of reasonable fuel economy. When I hear people describing their beloved trucks and SUVs, I often hear comedic phrases like, it's not that bad actually, I get 17 miles per gallon in the city. Or on the highway, I can get 22 to 23 miles per gallon consistently. Those are good figures for a dump truck or a school bus. But when you're talking about a vehicle that is regularly used to transport fewer than 10 people, they shouldn't even enter your realm of consideration. Reasonable fuel economy starts at 35 MPG US highway and much higher is possible. The Honda Insight two-seater from the early 2000s, for example, regularly returns over 70 miles per gallon in combined use, yet you can buy a nice 2001 model on the used market for about $5,000. If you commute alone or have no children, this may still be the ultimate car. Take that, Prius. So let's see how much people really are wasting on fueling their anti-mustache mobiles. In one of the most recent emails, a guy told me he was driving about 40 miles per day in a pickup truck. At 40 miles a day, times 200 workdays per year, he's commuting 8,000 miles per year just for work. We can add in another 7,000 for errands and vacations and end up with 15,000 miles, right around the average U.S. annual driving level. Assuming this truck burns at 18 mpg, this person is wasting 833 gallons of fuel per year, or $3,100 every year, even at our among the cheapest in the world price of $375 a gallon. Switching to a more reasonable car at 35 miles per gallon would cut the bill by $1,600 a year. Switching to an actual commuter car, like the Insight at 70 mpg, would shrink the gas consumption to 214 gallons and reduce the bill by $2,300 per year. If you don't get excited by numbers like $1,600 and $2,300 per year, I need you to take a break from reading, print out a picture of me, 
and use it to punch yourself in the face while looking into the mirror so you can watch the grave disciplinary scene unfold. Every 10 years, compounded at 7%, those savings add up to $22,000 and $31,700, respectively. Let's put it another way. Switching from an SUV to a car will save you enough to buy a new luxury car every 10 years or an excellent used car every four years. But since that would be a foolish use of the savings, let's consider another option. For an average earner with an average savings rate, switching from an SUV to a car will allow you to retire at least 10 years earlier in fuel savings alone. If you add in the cheaper tires, oil changes, and other parts used by efficient cars, the savings are even bigger. This is a point that cannot be stressed too strongly. There is almost no possible case for driving around in a sub 35 mile per gallon car, and yet the roads are full of them. Virtually all of the drivers are broke, and they can't afford even the fuel bills for their cars. And yet they continue to buy more gas guzzlers for themselves. It's the biggest source of mass insanity in the modern world, and yet people still buy these ridiculous cars for themselves every day. If you have a side business or a very large family that requires major cargo capacity occasionally, it is usually much more cost-effective to own an efficient car for most of your driving and a second behemoth vehicle, an early 2000 minivan, for example, for the rare hauling events. Adding my own hauler minivan to the fleet increased my insurance costs by only $7 per month. Even after adding registration and depreciation costs, owning the extra machine is much cheaper than doing all the driving at the higher rate of fuel consumption. For more occasional hauling, simply towing a trailer, open or enclosed, or turning your little car into a big one may even save you from the hassle of owning a hauler vehicle. So hopefully this answers the question once and for all. Yes, you should sell your truck to get an efficient car if you're driving anywhere close to the national average. Yes, it will save you a load of money. No, you won't be comparing your truck's used value to the sticker price of a new car because you won't be buying a new car. Ever. Yes, your life will go on and be just as happy even as you adapt to the new way of getting around. Just stop fooling yourself and sell that effing gas guzzler before this article catches on and causes the resale value to drop to zero. You've been warned. Happy shopping! You just listened to the post titled It's Never Too Late to Ditch Your Gas Guzzler by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. If you have any comments about today's post or today's author or any other comments, come visit OLDPodcast.com and please share your thoughts with us. And once again, please show your support for this very free and unprofitable at the moment show by joining the personal finance family over at oldpodcast.com. Even easier, for those of you who prefer texting, you can text the word financial to 44222 to join. And you will get some free tips every week. You'll get a few free financial gifts, and you'll be entered as well to win a free book each and every month. So it is a win-win for everybody. Please come check it out. And that is episode 23 of Optimal Finance Daily. Tomorrow, I will have a post for you from Zen Habits. I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from amazing bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.